So I understand that just from an individual psychological standpoint, when you are faced with very serious accusations, your first instinct is to recoil and get defensive and maybe even lash out. But given that Joe Biden has years of videos available on the internet for everyone to see of him inappropriately kissing and touching women and girls without their consent, presumably, you would think that he would at least not have as much room to try to deflect. You'd think that he'd at least try to publicly seem like he's being introspective and he's trying to listen and be respectful. But his response to the allegations made by Lucy Flores that he gave her an unwanted kiss and was smelling her hair and made her feel uncomfortable, I mean, his response has been just downright embarrassing because he's handling this in the worst way imaginable because I think that his first statement that he released was acceptable. You know, um, was it ideal? I don't know. It's hard to formulate a statement that touches on the concerns of the person who's accusing you of this because you don't know what's in their head, but I think that him pledging to listen was important. However, we're now getting reports that he's angry, he's stewing over it, and now he's lashing out. We're at that phase now. And this is what his campaign is doing. They're blaming Bernie Sanders. So as Joe Perdicone of Business Insider reports, former Vice President Joe Biden's inner circle is reportedly stewing over the surge of accusations that the prospective 2020 presidential candidate inappropriately touched multiple women and think Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders' team could be behind the renewed focus. Axios reported on Tuesday that several individuals close to Biden are suspicious that the Sanders camp is at least partly behind the anti-Biden campaign. In addition, one of Biden's top backers believes he is still moving forward with an upcoming campaign announcement and is ready to kill Bernie when he jumps in the race, according to Axios. So this is downright shameful to me because this is the same level of conspiracy mongering that we see from Republicans whenever a Republican is accused. When Roy Moore was accused, when Brett Kavanaugh was accused, there was this attack on the accuser's political motivations and if they were doing it simply for purposes of political expediency to get someone in politics that they don't like. And here we see a Democrat engaging in that same type of behavior. Unbelievable. And he's accusing Bernie while not acknowledging the fact that he's been acting inappropriately out in the open for all of us to see for years. Bernie Sanders didn't make you kiss women on the head without asking Joe Biden. You did that yourself. You're the one who chose to act inappropriately. And maybe that wasn't your intent to make women feel uncomfortable, but it doesn't matter. You still were touchy-feely and didn't think about how we'd perceive that. And now you want to cry foul because people are speaking up as you're about to run for president. Can I run with Jess Dad's gonna stand pretty close. <laughs> and I love how there's this underlying implication that Bernie Sanders has to cook up some type of fabricated Me Too conspiracy against Joe Biden in order to beat him. Bernie doesn't have to beat you this way. Bernie Sanders can juxtapose his past policy positions with your policy positions, and he will whoop your ass handily because you supported the crime bill. You voted for the Iraq War. You voted to repeal Glass-Steagall. You voted for the Patriot Act. So he doesn't have to resort to concocting a Me Too conspiracy against you to beat you, Joe Biden. He could do that just based on the policy substance. But because Joe Biden can argue based on the policy substance really against any of his Democratic primary opponents, he has to avoid talking about policy substance. So he's projecting and thinking that his opponents like Bernie Sanders also have to avoid the substance when the opposite is true. So, I mean, what a disgusting response. What a disgusting response. You can't just take responsibility for your own actions just this one time when we have you on video. I mean, even back in 2015, when 
Bernie Sanders hadn't even announced that he was running for president, Jon Stewart did a segment on The Daily Show and he brought the receipts where he showed all the times that you acted inappropriately on camera for all of us to see. Now, I'm not saying that what Joe Biden is being accused of is any where near the level of accusations that were lobbed against someone like Brett Kavanaugh. But what we are saying is that to deny and accuse your political opponent of concocting a conspiracy when you've been acting like this inappropriately for years is borderline delusional. Now, Bernie Sanders campaign manager Faye Shakir hit back with what I think was a really powerful response. So as Sam Stein, Jackie Kucinich, and Gideon Resnick of The Daily Beast explain, Sanders campaign manager Faye Shakir strongly denied any suggestion that the senator's team or its allies were behind the Flores story, saying accusations of such made his blood boil. Neither the Bernie Sanders campaign nor anyone involved in it planted, planned, persuaded, waited, cajoled, or otherwise urged Lucy Flores or anyone else to tell their story. Full stop, period, end of sentence. I don't want to hear it. We didn't play a role, Shakir told the Daily Beast. But this is why my blood boils, he added. We've heard through innuendo and rumors that somehow this campaign was involved in Lucy Flores telling her story, and it is deeply disrespectful and shameful that any time a woman comes forward to tell her story, there has to be some kind of intimation or suggestion that that person is doing so out of some political agenda or that the person may be lying. It is is shameful. We went through the Donald Trump campaign in which a number of women came forward to tell their stories and they were dismissed and criticized and ripped by the president of the United States on the highest stage of the land. We saw it with Dr. Christine Blasey Ford that she must be a Dianne Feinstein plant. It is dismissive and disrespectful that whenever a woman comes forward, the first suggestion is that there has to be a political agenda driving them. And that, I think, was the perfect response. You can say that he got heated, but that moral outrage was justified. Because how dare he deflect in this instance? There were people, Chapel Trap House was one of them, I was one of them, who speculated that Joe Biden's inappropriate behavior would be an issue. We didn't predict that it would be Lucy Flores who would come forward because we didn't know that this happened. But just seeing his behavior with women, with Stephanie Carter... Uh, Ash Carter's wife, even if she says that she didn't feel uncomfortable, but seeing it with Chris Coon's daughter, I would have thought this would have been an issue because the media would have brought it up once he announced or something like that. So we were all expecting this to be an issue even before we knew about the Lucy Flores story. So for him to just try to use Bernie Sanders as a scapegoat rather than actually being introspective and trying to improve as a human being, I think it's just downright despicable. His response to this is the exact opposite of what you should do. Take responsibility and communicate to us, Joe, that you're willing to grow because we don't need to fabricate some type of Me Too story to get you disqualified. Your own career has disqualified you. Your vote for the Iraq war has disqualified you. You pushing for the TPP has disqualified you. So I don't think it's reasonable to assume Bernie needs to even fabricate anything because that wouldn't help him. Because if it got out that he did do this, that would hurt him when he doesn't need to do this. He could just challenge you head to head on the policy substance. But again, Joe Biden has no policy substance. So of course, he's going to cry foul here because in his mind, he can't talk about policy substance. So like I said, he's projecting and he thinks that everyone else is going to do the same. Well, not everyone in this race is like you and Beto O'Rourke. They have more than platitudes, Joe. They actually have policy and you don't have that. So you can be an adult and grapple with this in a healthy and constructive way where women don't feel uncomfortable talking about instances where men touched them inappropriately and made them feel really embarrassed and shocked. Or you can do what the Republicans have been doing and try to discredit them and um, smear anyone who may or may not be involved with supposedly political motivations. That seems to be what he's doing.